We open on The Undertaker. Signora Bonacera's eyes are set deeply in shadow as he tells us, I believe in America. America has made my fortune, and I raised my daughter in the American fashion. I gave her freedom, but I taught her never to dishonor her family. She found a boyfriend, not an Italian. She went to the movies with him. She stayed out late. I didn't protest. Then her boyfriend and an accomplice tried to rape her. The undertaker says she resisted. She kept her honor. So they beat her like an animal. This is the first two minutes of Francis Ford Coppola's masterpiece, The Godfather. It's 1944 and this Italian immigrant to New York has come to Don Corleone for justice. I'm Brian Downs, this is ProSex Studio, and on this channel I discuss the sexual messages in famous films and television series. Are they positive or negative? If you've been watching the channel, you know that the message our culture sends us about our bodies and biologies is unrelentingly negative, and this monument of late 20th century cinema is no exception. The Godfather opens with an ominous story about a terrible attack on a young woman, the dark side of the American dream, the danger that comes when father doesn't protest. In another few minutes, Don Corleone will agree to have her attackers savagely beaten in retribution. This is one of the 12 negative memes that Hollywood constantly recycles for us, called Danger is Sex, where sex is presented as dangerous, repulsive, unethical. The entire movie so far is about this terrible crime, and the crime that will follow as justice. Is there a counterexample? No. It is the day that the Don's daughter is to be married. It is tradition for the patriarch to receive requests on this occasion and thus the meeting with Bonacera. The house and grounds are packed with friends, family, hitmen, and syncophants. Among the crowd is Sonny Corleone, played by James Caan, one of the Don's four sons. This gangster prince takes his side chick upstairs and bangs her against the bedroom door during his sister's wedding reception. Sonny is so flagrant in this that his wife knows exactly what he is doing and she is not happy and his brother Tom catches him in the middle of it. This is presented as a symptom of Sonny's hot-blooded impulsiveness, his violent nature. This is called Your Problem is Sex. Whenever a protagonist is showed to be interested in sex, to be pursuing it, to have a sex life, it's always presented as a symptom of what's wrong with them, something they need to overcome. Or it could be the negative meme, it's villains who sex, where it's always the villain of the piece who's enjoying their sex life with eagerness. It depends on how you want to look at Sonny. But contrast this with Sonny's brother, Michael, portrayed in a star-making turn by Al Pacino. Michael is the sympathetic character at the center of this story. Recently returned from service in World War II, he attends the wedding with a date, Kay Adams, played by Diane Keaton. They will be husband and wife by the end of the film, but there is virtually no sexuality between them. Michael does not refer to Kay as his girlfriend or lover or fiance. Kay doesn't call Michael her boyfriend or her bang buddy or any other term that would imply that they get naked together. Michael doesn't take Kay upstairs and pound her against the door. They have a few perfunctory kisses over the course of the film, but that's all. Have they slept together yet? The film does not tell us. Constance Corleone, Connie, is the bride. Carlo is her groom. We don't see any sexuality between this married couple in the entire film, save for a brief kiss as they dance at their wedding. Their relationship is ugly, dysfunctional, with plates and fists flying. Carlo is a turd. We see that. We see a man beating his pregnant wife with a leather belt. We see no sex. That aspect of their relationship is merely implied by Connie's pregnancies. Again, danger is sex. Uh, they are married, they're having children, therefore they're in a sexual relationship, but that relationship is a disaster. It's awful to watch. It's also villains who sex, because Carlo is one of the villains of the piece, and he's in a sexual relationship with Connie, and it's also strongly implied that he has sex outside of his marriage. The only other reference we get to their bedroom life comes from Luca Brazzi. Luca is a six-foot-six six slab of salami whose talent is not charming people, it's deleting them. When he meets with Don Vito Corleone to thank the Don for inviting him to the wedding, he says, I hope their first child is a masculine child. 
This is an oblique reverence to sex because that's how you make a child, but it is awkward and sinister because everything this torpedo says is sinister and awkward. The film doesn't give this line to a charming character, the film gives it to a very scary guy. Of course, much of The Godfather is taken up with gangster business. In a famous sequence, Tom Hagen, the adopted son of Don Corleone, played by Robert Duvall, goes to California to persuade a movie producer named Jack Waltz to give a man named Johnny Fontaine the lead in an upcoming film. Mr. Waltz says, no, Johnny Fontaine will never get that part because Johnny Fontaine ran off with one of Waltz's prized starlets. She was beautiful. Walt shouts, she was young, she was innocent, she was the greatest piece of ass I've ever had, and I've had them all over the world. The gray-haired Waltz makes one mention of his sex life. One mention of his tawdry sex life. And within two minutes, in the very next scene, he wakes up with his prized stallion's amputated head under his gory sheets. That is the price for defying the dawn. And admitting to ever having had sex. Soon we have a brief scene where Michael and Kay are out doing some Christmas shopping. They share a brief peck of a kiss. Then we cut directly to Luca Brazzi armoring and arming himself to go on a dangerous mission for the Don. This is the beginning of the sequence in which rival gangsters, having bribed informants inside the Corleone family, launch their attack. Luca Brazzi is killed and the Don nearly dies in an assassination attempt where he suffers five gunshot wounds. This is Danger is Sex. The film launches this sequence of blood and peril with a few seconds of the lovers. It is also the wanting disaster. Michael is pursuing a sexual relationship with Kay. We assume they're going to bed together. And then someone shoots his father quite a few times, forcing Michael to take a leadership position in the crime family, which he never wanted. We arrive at a scene of Sene Corleone at home trying to respond to this crisis. His anxious wife is there with him. Sene goes to her and kisses her tenderly on the head. Instantly, there is a banging at the back door of the house. Sonny's wife is frightened. Sonny arms himself with a revolver before he goes to the door. It turns out to be only Clemenza, a loyal soldier bearing news. This is the wanting disaster. Sonny gives his wife a comforting kiss in their own home and Bango, is that an assassin at the door? Soon enough, Michael becomes a target in this battle of gangsters. For his safety, the family sends him into hiding 4,500 miles away on the island of Sicily, where the clan has old world roots. In the year he spends in Sicily, he meets, falls in love with, and marries a woman named Apollonia. On their wedding night, we see Apollonia bear her breast to her husband. They embrace. And we cut to a scene of Kay showing up at the Corleone compound in New York, demanding to know where Michael is. Tom Hagen deflects this request, but the juxtaposition of these two scenes presents Michael's marriage to Apollonia as a form of dishonesty with Kay, and sets up the audience for a conflict between the three of them. Danger is sex. Michael goes to bed with his wife. <laughs> Move immediately to the abandoned girlfriend in New York, trying to track Michael down. The enemies of the Corleones kill Sonny by luring him into an ambush at a highway toll booth. How did they get Sonny on the highway at that moment? They suborned his smacky little brother-in-law, Carlo. A woman calls Carlo's house. His wife, Connie, picks up the phone. The woman asks her to please tell Carlo that she will be arriving late tonight. This upsets Connie very much. Dishes go flying. Why don't you bring your whore to dinner? Carlo beats her with his belt, Connie calls her brother Sonny, and he comes racing to her furious rescue, which is how he is ambushed and killed, just as his enemies had arranged it. Because sex. Also, who is it who has just gobbled a box of 45 ACP on that highway? Sonny Corleone. Which of the four boys was he? The one with the passionate and varied sex life. Contrast this with Tom Hagen, who, although married, is not shown having any sex life whatsoever. He hardly touches his wife. Tom gets kidnapped and released unscathed. Sonny gets massacred. And Apollonia, Michael's Sicilian wife, gets about three more minutes of screen time before she is killed in a car bomb meant for Michael. Let's review. Apollonia marries Michael. 
We see her bare breasts on their wedding night, just before they embrace, and the camera cuts away. But we, the audience, are meant to understand what kind of relationship they are now in. Then she blows right the fuck up. The only woman we see partially nude in the entire film, also the only woman who dies in the mob war, this is the wanting disaster. Characters who pursue sex, have sex, want sex, have something bad happen to them immediately following. Also, take that, you Sicilian slut. No one ever mentions her again. Her death is not cited as a motivation for anything Michael does afterward. His involvement with her doesn't really change the course of his life. She showed him her tits and she was blown to bits. In contrast, Michael's physical relationship with Kay is only implied. We never see the two of them embracing, undressed, in a bedroom, when Michael proposes to Kay, it is on an autumn street in the middle of the afternoon. Both of them are dressed in layers. They do not kiss. They do not embrace. They do not touch each other. They do not sink into a bed as the scene fades to black. Michael speaks of love and of having children, but there is not one moment of eroticism between them in the very scene in which he proposes marriage. This is the relationship the audience is meant to support. This is the wife who survives, the one who does not show her husband her breasts. One of the layers of anti-sex propaganda here is called celebrating celibate marriage. Hollywood will often present marriages, legal marriages or long-term uh, pair bondings that are very much like marriage, as sexless relationships like it does here. The marriage we're supposed to support is the marriage that doesn't have a bedroom in it. The New York-based Corleones are involved in the casino business in Las Vegas. Fredo Corleone, who is the Fredo of the group, is involved in the Nevada operation. When Michael goes to Vegas for business, Fredo greets him with a pride of prostitutes in his hotel suite. Michael orders Fredo to send them away. Fredo is made a fool of himself in offering this to his brother. Michael is resolutely celibate. Fredo's interest in the readily available sex in Las Vegas is presented as one of his many flaws. Your problem is sex. The next time Michael and Kay share a scene, they have a toddler together who is three years old, so about four years have gone by. We didn't see them get married, but apparently they did. Uh, the Don Vito refers to Kay as Michael's wife, so we get that at least. We certainly never see them in bed together. And when do we see them kiss and embrace? At the climax of the film, when Michael has just told her that he is not the man who has ordered the recent litany of murders, and moments later, when his captains and his soldados close the door between them, Kay realizes the truth. Sex positivity is face down in a bowl of spaghetti. The only people who have done the deed and survived are Fredo, and being Fredo is his punishment, and Michael and Kay, who are now trapped in a hell of loathing and lies. Other than that, Sonny is dead and Apollonia is dead. Although, I'm sorry, Sonny's side chick does make it through as far as I can tell. No one is having any fun in their sex life and no one is having what you'd call a successful sexual relationship. Michael and Kay are married, but that is spiraling downward rapidly because of the world of lies and deceit in, that they inhabit. This incredibly influential piece of 20th century cinema, this monument to the art, is viciously anti-sex. So I'm Brian Downs. This is Pro Sex Studio. Come on back next week for more of the same. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, Share the video around. All of that trains the algorithm to love me. Thank you for your time.